Hey y'all and welcome back to another Wedding Wednesday where we go through tips and tricks for my fellow brides and grooms of how to successfully plan your wedding. In today's episode we're talking about flowers and florists. But first and foremost, if it's your first time here, welcome! Make sure to like this video if you learned something new, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell so you can be notified every time a new video is uploaded every week. So let's get started on flowers and florists for your big day. First and foremost, you need to decide are you going to be doing your flowers yourself or if you're going to be hiring a florist. If you're going to be hiring a florist, there's a whole bunch of things you need to coordinate with them. And if you're going to be doing your flowers yourself, there's a whole bunch of things you need to coordinate with yourself and make sure that you have in line so that your flowers can be successful for your event. Your flower budget, as we learned in our wedding budget video, check it out if you missed it, is going to be around 10% of your overall wedding budget. Some couples spend between $300 and $700 on their wedding budget for flowers and some spend anywhere from $1,500 to $2,500 on their flowers. So find out what you're going to be able to budget into your wedding budget and stick to it because flowers can escalate quickly. Flowers are a great way to save money on your budget though. If you're willing to do them yourself, it is a lot cheaper. If you're going to be hiring somebody to do something kind of in the middle where they arrange maybe your bouquet and then you get a bulk amount of flowers for your decor and your boutonnieres and all the other extra flowers to just put together the day before, then that's going to be sort of a middle ground. If you're going to have a florist do all of your flowers for you and show up on the day, set everything up, provide everything for you, it is going to be in the higher price range. Start looking for your florist six to eight months before your wedding day. You need to have an option of two or three, just like any other vendor when you first started shopping around. If you can narrow it down to two, three florists and then start to get reviews, start to get reviews from other brides, start to get reviews from wedding websites, find out who is going to be the best fit for your event. And how to determine if they're gonna be the best fit for your event is find out what style of florist they're going to be. If they have a florist that is very traditional, something that's just a, you know, round flowers, nothing too whimsical, but you have a whimsical wedding theme, that flor florist is not going to be a good fit for you. If you can find someone who is going to match your theme, match the style of your event, you, then you're good to go. And that florist is going to be the one for you. Before you meet with your florist, it is helpful to do your research of the inspirations of what you would like things to look like. If you can bring examples to your florist meetings, then they will be able to visualize and there won't be too much confusion when you're trying to explain the sort of arrangements you're, you're thinking of. And just being able to provide examples to them is going to really help both you and your florist out when you're trying to select your arrangements and the look of your flowers for your event. If you are trying to do fake flowers, Ain't no shame in that game, guys. But if you want the flowers to look like real flowers, you're going to have to go the silk flowers route. The silk flowers route is not necessarily the least expensive situation. Silk flowers, for the number of silk flowers that you're going to need if you're doing all silk flowers, is actually going to be more expensive than the real thing. So if you're wanting an alternative to real flowers, start to get creative. There's tons of creative aspects to flowers and alternative flowers that you can do for your event. Just start looking on Pinterest, start looking online, start looking at what other fellow brides and grooms have done for their events to get inspired. You don't have to do boutonnieres. You can make little seashell arrangements, which seashells are free if you just go to the beach and pick up some seashells. Create, you know, maybe some jute twine, and hot glue it all together and wham bam boutonnieres are done. Bridal bouquets, you don't have to do flowers. You can do, I've seen brides do lanterns, I've seen brides do paper flowers, I've seen brides actually make their own flowers out of, you know, the bottoms of plastic coke bottles and spray paint them and the way you burn them they look like flowers. There's just, there's so many cool creative aspects of things that you can do for substitutes of flowers that will save you a little money in the long run if that's something you're concerned about or if you're just not wanting to do real flowers for your event. Now how to find your florist. To find a florist, I'd suggest finding a florist in the town you are getting married. If that's your hometown, find one in your hometown. 
If you're getting married in the Bahamas, find a florist in the Bahamas. Do not transport flowers from one location to another location if that location is more than an hour away. Those flowers will not last the way you want them to last in your vehicle unless they're being transported by a florist in a cooler truck because you don't want any amount of wilting on your flowers when they are presented on your big day. So when you find your florist or your florists, because we're still working with a few selections, be clear with them about your budget. Be clear with them about the theme of your event. Be clear with them about the vision and how you want everything to look and the different entities of the event. So if you're gonna have an arbor and you need flowers for your arbor, be clear. If you're going to have six groomsmen and you need boutonnieres, but they're going to be different than the groom, be clear about that. If you're going to have a bridal bouquet, but you also need a bridal toss bouquet, be clear about that. So have an idea of what you need and what they're going to have to provide for you to fulfill what you need them to fulfill for your event. Confirm with them if they're going to be able to deliver the flowers and the timeline they need to deliver the flowers. That's why it's important to give them sort of a rough estimate of the day of the wedding. Our vendors can come in at this time, but our vendors need to be out at this time. The wedding ceremony starts at this time and everyone's coming for the reception at this time. So everybody's going to be out of the way and the event can start so that everything's clear. If you just give them the information and find out what they're going to be accountable for in the beginning, straight from the jump, you'll be good to go. If you are doing your flowers yourself, do be clear with them about pickup times. You need to confirm with them that the day before my event, I'm going to pick them up at three o'clock. Is there going to be someone here that I can pick them up from? Who is that person going to be? And are they going to be clear with my order? Also, if you're going to be doing your flowers yourself, make sure to have the space where your flowers are going to be kept prior to your event designated. So don't put them in a fridge with a bunch of food and stack them all around because that's actually going to wilt your flowers. All that contaminating smell and chemicals, whether you think they're there or not in a fridge, are going to wilt your flowers. What I would suggest is either a fridge by themselves with nothing else in it, or you can put them in a dark closet with cold water and a bunch of vases or wet paper towels with some ice and then a fan. As cold as you can get it, the better. If you have flowers that are susceptible to wilting, especially like hydrangeas, hydrangeas are, are the weakest of flowers, but they're beautiful and they're beautiful for weddings. So if you want hydrangeas, have hydrangeas, but just know that they are very susceptible to wilting and browning and, and not looking the way that you want them to look. If you have flowers that fall into that category, do not cut the stems until you are ready to use them. Go ahead and submerge them in water, keep them wet, but do not cut the stems of the flowers that are maybe like the weaker flowers that wilt very easily until you are ready to use them. If you're wanting a choice of flowers that are a little bit more budget friendly to use either as your statement flowers or as filler flowers, flowers such as roses, Gerber daisies, Alstroemeria, hydrangeas, saldago, carnations, and daisy sprays. They all come in a variety of colors and they come in hardy. They're a little hardier flowers and they are a little bit more cost effective. Do make sure to stay in season with your flowers. If you choose flowers that are out of season, not only are they going to be lower quality, but they're also going to be higher price because those flowers are harder to find, harder to harvest during a time of year that they're not naturally seasoned in. So do your research, ask your florist, and find flowers that are going to be in season to the day of your wedding. Also, if you choose two or three statement flowers and then s surround them with smaller flowers that are you know, maybe just a little bit more accent flowers, you'll also have more success when you're doing your flower arrangements. We did sunflower as the flower to rule them all and then a wildflower collection around. So we found a few alstroemerias, we did a few roses, we did a few lilies, we did a few other options that gave it that wildflower look and then put eucalyptus and a bunch of other greenery around it to give it that reach that we wanted. We wanted things that had a little bit of movement to them, a little bit more of a spread. So another tip to do is to pick a flower 
and then surround it with textured greenery. Greenery comes in larger bulks than flowers and it makes it really easy to do fillers on your bouquets and arrangements. So when you've selected your florist and you're getting started making your flower plan, have your counts. You need to know the counts of, okay, I need one bridal bouquet or two bridal bouquets if that's your situation. I need this many bride, bridesmaids bouquets. I need this many groom's boutonnieres. I need this many groom's men boutonnieres. I've got two fathers of, I've got two mothers of, I've got four grandparents of, so they all need corsages and boutonnieres. I've got five musicians, I want them to wear boutonnieres. I've got nine ushers, if you have nine ushers, they need boutonnieres. I've got an arbor. I've got candle lighting ceremony that needs a few flowers. I've got sand ceremony that needs a few flowers. We're all coming through a big archway for our grand entrance. That needs to have flowers. Our centerpiece count is going to be 18 tables. Our food table needs a little bit of flower accent. We're having a sign-in table, a memory table. We're just If you want flowers on it, visualize it and put it on the list. Get your counts before you meet with your florist. Also remember your cake table. Are you going to have flowers on your cake or even just your dessert table? Make sure if you need to coordinate with your florist when they drop your flowers off if you're going that route or your wedding coordinator or somebody from your wedding party to coordinate from your florist to your cake designer, cake decorator so that your cake can have the flowers that you wanted on it as well. Florists can also provide a lot of rental items. What sort of vessels are your flowers going to go in when it comes to centerpieces and accent items for decor. Are you going to have them in bowls? Are you going to have them in vases? Are you going to have them in oasis foam on a plate or a platter? How are your flowers going to be presented? Your florist can actually provide some of these rental items for you, so just ask if it's something that you need or if you can't accommodate it through another rental company, through your caterer or from your wedding planner if they don't have them available. So let's talk about timeline for your florist and flowers. If you're doing your own flowers, you need to pick them up 36 hours or sooner to your event. If you're talking timeline with your florist, you need to have all your deposits paid, everything good to go, and you need to give them the timeline for your event. You need to tell them vendors show up here, vendors leave here, and this is the time I need you to have everything set up by. Finally, with any other vendor, let's talk contract and proposal. The difference from contract and proposal is the contract is going to be all business. What, are, what am I signing you on for? Who is responsible party involved? What is the overall price? What is the timeline for the day? Who can I contact on the day of if we have any issues? What am I paying you for? Just all of the business. Whereas the proposal is kind of where all the creativity comes in. These are the flowers I want to use. These are the counts for the arbor and the cake and the bar area set up for flowers. This is, this is the brainstorming and kind of where we have all of our workable ideas on the proposal, where the contract is all the money moves, all the money matters. So keep them separate, but do confirm. And your contract is something that once it's signed, once it's good to go, it's pretty permanent but your proposal is going to be sort of a working document, something that you can sort of work off of based on the guidelines of the contract. Within your contract, you are going to typically pay 50% to hold that florist, and then by the time that your wedding day approaches, either two weeks, maybe even a week before your big day, you're gonna to have to pay the rest of the amount, or on the day of, once everything is delivered and everything is good to go, then your final amount's going to be paid. Some florists do it one way, some do it another way. Just work with your florist and make sure you're clear before you sign your contract what the deposits and the payment schedules are going to be. Also on the contract, it should explicitly state sales tax, delivery fees, and overtime. Be mindful of these three items because they can catch you by surprise when you're calculating your overall budget, but just make sure that they are on the contract and everybody's clear with what's being paid, how much everything is, and everything is solid when you go and greet with the contract. So I do hope that this video was helpful on how 
to plan with your florist, pick out your flowers. If I did leave anything out, please leave it in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you guys about how your floral inspiration for your wedding day is going. Until next time, I'm Jane Corley with Pick Visions Media Arts and Photography. Please make sure to like this video if you learned something new, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell so you can be notified every time a new video is uploaded every week. Until next time, I'll see you later, guys.